Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this series of videos, we will be focusing our attention on the steel connection design workflow for designing gusset connections for a variety of different horizontal bracing situations, including horizontal column beam brace joints, horizontal beam beam brace joints, and horizontal X brace joints. Now, when creating your joint data for each of these types of joints, it will be important that you specify the appropriate beam column and brace sections along with your loading data. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And as you can see, we've already created several different types of joints that will require a gusset connection. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on a horizontal beam beam brace joint, which is already currently selected in the joint selection area. For this particular joint, we are ready to proceed with the connection design. To start that process, we will go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Assign icon. In the Connection Assignment dialog, you're going to notice that our filters are automatically set to the type of joint we currently have selected. For a horizontal beam beam brace style joint, we have two different options. The first type of connection we have is the CA, which basically means that the gusset will be connected to the webs of the beams through a clip angle. The other option is a directly welded option, where the gusset will be directly welded to the webs of the beam members. For this particular exercise, let's go ahead and select the CA option and then click the Assign button. Once the connection assignment is complete, we will click Close. Now the first thing I do after assigning a connection is take a look in the joint selection area for the status of the connection design. For this particular joint, we can see that the interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered during the connection design process. If you would like to review the connection design parameters or the connection design report and calculations, you can go to the connection pad. To access the connection pad, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then edit your gusset connection. This will bring up the connection pad and over at the left hand side you're going to see the data area. Now within the data area, we will see all of the parameters that are used to define this particular connection. Any of the parameters that have a little blue arrow adjacent to them mean that these parameters were defined either in the global model settings or through the joint creation process. These types of parameters can be modified within the connection pad, but in order for them to be saved to the connection, we would need to exit out of the connection pad and adjust those parameters where they were defined. Any other type of parameter that doesn't have a little blue arrow adjacent to it means that that parameter can be modified and saved to this connection. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these connection options. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll on down. And the first area I'm going to get to is the member area. Now by default, this checkbox for the gusset directly bolted to the members is unselected. If I go ahead and select this option, you can see that I'm able to detail my gusset connection where it'll be bolted to the top flange of the beam members. If you don't want that configuration, you could just leave that checkbox unselected. We also have the option to enter a vertical offset if your working point isn't exactly at this location. Let's go ahead and scroll on down. Now for gusset connections, each interface for the connection design is defined separately, and you can access the different interfaces 
through this pull-down menu. When the gusset option is selected, you can see that you can modify the gusset plate itself, including the thickness and material properties of the gusset. If I want to take a look at any of the gusset to girder connections, gusset to beam connections, or gusset to brace connections, I will go ahead and select those interfaces. Here you can see that the gusset will be connected to the girder through those clip angles, and I can also investigate whether or not a welded connection might suit my needs. Now here you can see when you make any modifications, the interaction ratio is updated automatically. Here I can see my interaction ratio did increase, but I'm still less than 1.0, which means a passing connection design was found. But since the interaction ratio is in the yellow box, I know that a warning was produced with this style of connection. So I'm gonna to wanna to review the report and see if there are any other changes I can make to remove those warnings. For me, for this particular connection, I'm gonna to return to the clip angles. So here you can see when I have clip angles selected, I can go ahead and modify the angle size and material properties. I can go ahead and decide whether or not it's a double angle or a single. I can also customize the bolting information and I can even weld the connection to the gusset itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the other interfaces we have available. Here we have gusset to girder, we have a gusset to beam option, and then we have the gusset to brace option. You can see that for this style of connection, your gusset is going to be connected to the brace through bolts. The bolt size and type can be customized per your project specifications, along with the types of holes that will be used. Now, once you've completed modifying your connection to your liking, you can also review the connection design report. To access the report, go to the results icon within the connection pad. Now new in RAM connection standalone, we're gonna notice that the report has an index over at the left-hand side, so you can jump to different areas of the report as needed. Let's go ahead and scroll down in our report and we'll be able to see all of the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed. If any of the geometric considerations failed, we're gonna see a red X in the status area, and this type of thing will produce a warning. In the design check areas, we're gonna notice the interaction ratio along with a code reference will be reported. We can go ahead and scroll on down and review any of the information for each of the interfaces. In addition to that, if we would like to view the connections themselves, we can click on the view formulas icon. With that icon selected, we'll be able to see all of the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Let's go ahead and close out of the report. Now the last thing we're gonna take a look at while in the connection pad is the DXF view. In RAM connection standalone, you can review and export a DXF for each of your connections. This DXF is customizable as well. Now at this point, if I made any changes to my connection design, I can click on the save icon and then close out of the connection pad. At this point, this concludes my process for designing an HBBB or horizontal beam beam brace connection within RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.